Welcome to another video from the farm. Today I'm going to be talking to you about how do you get free land in the UK? Believe it or not, there's actually a few sort of simple ways and a couple of more extreme ways about which you can actually do this in the UK. The basic one that everyone talks about is find yourself some unused, disused, someone who's died piece of land. It ties into another one that you can basically find an unregistered piece of land and claim it for yourself. And you've got my favourite one, which would be collaborate with someone who already owns a piece of land. You can help them, they can help you. Depending on how inclined you are, you can go down the extreme angle and you can fully try and steal land off a huge company. Well, your first method then, basically finding a piece of land from someone who's deceased or just doesn't use the piece of land, I guess is more than likely going to be some sort of old age pensioner that owns a piece of land relatively easy in a way to be honest because we've got modern technology so you can just jump straight on google maps you can find all sorts of disused patches or patches that are really overgrown just looking around sort of your local area or the area where you'd want to be to be honest and then it also helps if you are a bit of a walker a bit of an adventurer because then when you're out and about on your travels you will more than likely spot a few bits that are like oh no one seems to have been here in many a year fences are down or falling down overgrown lots of fallen trees inside a woodland that's always a good indicator if people use it or not and uh yeah you can spot one things that way so you can't hurt a bit of local knowledge so if you do know people in a rural area so to speak they might know of a piece of land that is unused and has been for some time like i say because of the same situation just mentioned an old person that no longer uses it or has the ability to look after it properly or you've got someone that's passed away already with no relatives to take it on. Also have sort of big, big farming contractors, I guess you'd call them, that will own lots of land all over the place. And you, sometimes you'll have a field that has like a wood, like I've got here next to it. And then they'll own the wood as well as the field, but they only ever use the field and they'll never touch the wood and more than likely never ever go in there. So that's always a good one to look out for. We'll have to do some trekking to find those ones again need to find a bit of wood that's got lots of stuff in there no evidence of bird feeders people using it for shoots etc and yeah you can basically just live on that land if you want for as long as you get away with or long enough and it will become yours which leads me on to nicely the adverse possession rules so basically you find a piece of unused land or you know it's sort of used but not registered you can basically fence it start using it put yourself a little tin shed on there or something to claim the area put a few signs up maybe put your mobile number on the signs just in case there is someone that comes there and they're like what the hell is going on someone's in my land then you know that you can't use that piece of land very long but let's say everything goes nice and smooth for you so you've got i believe it's five years and then you can apply for temporary ownership but it's a 10-year process you need to wait before you can apply for you to become the registered owner of that piece of land and then I believe there's a couple of years after, I think it's two years after that, you've got to wait until the land will officially become yours because they have time to contest your sort of change of ownership, if you know what I mean. But they have to provide actual evidence that they own it. So if it's an unregistered piece of land, it means it's bought before 1990. So 30-odd years now, people are a bit lax with records. So if, yeah, if someone's just inherited the land and they don't use it, and they're not in the area, the chances are they might not be able to actually prove that they own it anyway. So good luck on that one. 100% Google Maps is your friend when you come in to look for unregistered or unused land. You will really easily spot unused land on Google Maps because of the colour differential compared to the farmed lands around it. But yeah, do have some faith. There is 3% of land unowned out there. 15% unregistered land as well. So the chances of you actually finding some you could have are pretty high, to be honest, better than the lottery. Now next is kind of your best bet, I think, overall, it's the least effort for you, is just find somebody who wants a hand with their land that they've already got, because believe me, there's many people out there, someone like myself, who has a decent sized plot, won't be able to look after it all generally, so they'll want someone who'd be willing to sort of pitch up, stay in a little camp, so to speak, a little caravan or something, and then be willing to do stuff on the land for you. Obviously, though, then you will not end up with a piece of land at the end of it, unless by some graces you become super best friends with a person and they don't have any relatives. You never know. They might leave you the land. 
it's not a piece of agricultural land. It was a piece of sort of an extension of a garden that I already know someone that happened to. They were really friendly with their next door neighbours and they really looked after them in their old age. And then when it came to it, when they were moving into care homes and whatnot, they just gave them that bit of their back garden as an extra sort of bonus for like, thank you. Nice one for your help over the years. And lastly then, you've got the Don move, ultimate anti the man move, and try and steal some land off these companies that are buying huge swathes of land everywhere in the aid of planting trees for carbon credits, buying woodlands because it's already an existing X amount of carbon capture a year, all that malarkey. Because if you've actually been looking at getting your own piece of land already, you might have seen that in the last sort of year and a half, two years, bits of land that were worth nothing because nobody wants to use them, I guess maybe apart from people like us, and uh, now they're worth a hell of a lot of money because a big company can buy it, plant a couple of thousand, 20,000 trees, and then that locks X amount of carbon up for them so they become carbon neutral once they've planted up enough. A lot of big companies doing that, so becoming more and more scarce to get cheap land because of that. But at the same time, they will not be putting in the man hours to maintain that land or be bothered to be checking if people are using it. So if you can find a piece of land that's been bought by a huge company, which will cost you three pounds to find that information out of the land registry, you literally find a piece of land that's been planted with trees, might be a farmer that's just done it under some scheme, but if it's in an area of like rural Wales or sort of, I guess an area that's just far away from stuff that's already a good agricultural area or there's usually a lot of animals on the field or, st or something, but it's now got trees on it. That's probably a piece of land that's been bought by a big company. So three quid on the land registry, you can check who's bought that. And if it has been bought by a big company, well, like I say, is a multi-million pound company going to be sending around people to check on the land other than having the occasional person inspect the trees? I don't think so. So if you can find a nice piece of land that's been planted up and it's maybe got some woodlands in the middle already, you'll more than likely have some sort of trackway in from when they were putting the, uh, the trees in and whatnot. So you should find somewhere pretty nice, I reckon. I'm not sure on the exact rules when it comes to squatters' rights. I do know it is a civil matter though. So again, with a big company, if you are going to be more trouble than you're worth to move on, effectively you keep yourself to yourself because they find out about it, it's more than likely someone surveying the trees or something, they'll put the email in and then they'll send out some representative from the local area, probably some manager to check out what's going on and as long as you can be like, look, I'm just staying in these woods or I'm just on this corner of this field, I'm not doing any damage, I'm not bothering your stuff, I know it's going to cost you X amount of money to get the bailiffs in to move me on and all that kind of jazz, they will more than likely just let you stay there as long as you don't rock the boat with them. Again, maybe sign some piece of paperwork that might say that means you'll never own the land because obviously they know the score, but they might let you stay there. It's always that chance. I just should mention, if you are going down that route or you're going down the adverse possession route, you're gonna be wanna be really, really good with your record keeping. So as soon as you're there and you've got your little plot laid out, you don't need to wire fence it, you just need to put fence posts in with a sign to say it's now yours and then take photographs, make sure your geolocation's on on your phone. So you've got records from the day one, I stake that claim. So like I say, if it is a bigger company's land or if it is a disused piece of land and they come along in say four or five years time, then you've got good chances of actually keeping the land because you've sort of already crossed a boundary basically and you've been maintaining it already. You've basically got squatters rights instantly because you've been maintaining a piece of land that they've ignored for five years and you've got evidence that you've been there five years. I mean, you'll probably be able to stay there a good old while all hidden away and stuff, but someone will probably find you. I've mentioned this before in videos, but in this country, everyone knows, not a lot of curtain twitchers. People like to know what's going on in people's business, don't they? So. If you're in an area and people are walking through, you're going to have people checking out. And if they see a little encampment in a wood, they're going to think something suspicious. They're going to phone council. So, yeah, the, the likelihood of you actually being able to adversely possess a piece of land is slim. 
so be prepared to move on if you are going to take that gamble but yeah all in all the best solution in my mind is find yourself something that's completely no one's land so then obviously you could just have that straight away but then after that find yourself someone that's got a piece of land work with them get yourself a little deal on the go so you can have an acre or something as your own and then basically live rent free on effectively your own piece of land maybe have to do a bit of work or something but yeah those are the two definitely the ones to look for if you can't find a piece of land that's just your land you're really going to struggle with the adverse possession today because like i say unless you get someone that's going to not want to spend the money so to speak on people moving you on court fees and all that it's uh it's going to be yeah a battle for you any more questions leave them below and i'll try and answer them or someone else who knows has already done an adverse possession maybe leave a comment below let us know how it went there are people out there that have successfully done it so i'm maybe a bit of a naysayer saying you'll get caught but there are people that have done it right then as always give the video a like and a subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time then, bye bye.